Well, my friends, those who are still here, and that's most of you, of course, it has been a very, very long week. It didn't go our way. I joked about my voice being gone yesterday or the day before. It, it's actually struggling right now, but we have what I think is maybe the most important show in months today, and it's not hyperbole, but when things don't go your way, you have to contextualize. You have to seek to understand. We have to figure out what happened and what to do next. And I want to start with a really good editorial by Tom Nichols that points out that Trump voters are now going to get what they deserve in the sense of what they voted for. It's not about the left will now punish Trump voters. Hey, the left has very little electoral power right now. It looks like we're losing everything. Uh, but there is no doubt here that although Donald Trump expanded his coalition on Tuesday, he got more of the Latino vote. He got more of the black vote. He won the popular vote. First Republican in what decades to win the popular vote. He took back the blue wall or at least part of it in the north of the country. But now at their peril, these new voters are going to face the consequences of a Trump presidency. Even if you voted for him, you are still going to get what Trump is going to give you. And there are many voters that supported Trump, not for his policies, but for his reality show of rage and resentment fueled by nativist instinct and fascist wet dreams and cultural grievances. And in the op ed that we're linking to, Tom Nichols compares this support by some of these groups to sort of an illiberal populism where voters who are hostile to democracy participate in democratic institutions, right? Some of them would have been fine with Trump stealing the 2020 election. They don't really care about democracy, but they're participating in it this time. They are voting to punish others, even if they themselves are also going to be punished. So we now have a situation where millionaires and billionaires ended up somehow aligned with a sliver of the working class Trump vote, despite Trump's policies likely harming younger minority voters, working family voters. Trump's policies towards those groups aren't going to change just because some of them voted for Trump. If Trump's policies don't do much for the average Texas Latino voter, if they voted for Trump, they're still going to suffer as a result of Trump's policies. And as I've said before, from what I'm seeing, Trump's going to give me a tax cut. The type of business I have is likely going to get either a new tax cut or an extension of the previous cubid tax cut under Trump. It's not good for the economy. It's not morally justified. It's not economically stimulative to do that but he's going to do it. And I didn't vote for the guy, but I'm still going to get or my business is still going to get that tax cut. And the opposite is true for those that did vote for Trump. Trump's priority here was avoid legal accountability for his crimes, which seems like he's going to succeed at dismantle checks on his power, including the rule of law. It seems he's going to succeed at that. I told you recently that at least the federal prosecutions of Trump are just going to poof, evaporate like a miracle. They're going to disappear. And now Trump and his voters are going to have to bear the consequences of his governance, which is not going to spare supporters from harm. One thing we learned in this election is Democrats can't win over these voters with policy arguments. It didn't work. We've got to acknowledge that any serious postmortem has to uh, uh, concede that that's the case. So now we will see, does suffering at the hand of Trump impact these voters? They voted for him, some of them. If Trump's second term is anything like the first term, many of those vo voters are now going to suffer. Will that get them to see the light? Now, as far as Trump goes, it doesn't matter because he can't run again. But as far as what they will support in 26 and 28, it's very relevant. So we keep talking about what do Democrats do? What does the left do? So much that we've tried just hasn't worked in this particular case with Republicans taking the White House, taking the Senate. We don't yet know about the House, but it's not looking particularly good for Democrats. Democrats have to take a step back and let events unfold. The breathless blame games, most of which make no sense. The problem 
was it was the wrong VP candidate. The problem was Liz Cheney campaign with Kamala for a day. The problem was people in Michigan angry about Gaza. We need to step back. We've issued plenty of warnings. Any further cautioning is going to increase their fixation. It's time to allow some space for the people who said, I think I want Trump over Harris. They maybe need to experience the consequences now firsthand, and then we will evaluate what effect that has on their voting patterns. Many in the audience know my first language is Spanish. I learned English later when I moved to the United States. And these days I do a fair amount of traveling and I always make an effort to learn some of the new language before I get to the country. I've tried a bunch of methods for this. I keep coming back to the app Babbel because with Babbel, you really can start speaking a new language in just three weeks instead of paying hundreds of dollars for classes or fooling yourself with language apps that are basically just simple games. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tools are approachable. They are rooted in real life situations. They're delivered with conversation based teaching. You might have seen on my Instagram. I was recently in France. Babbel got me ready last minute. I got to France. I was ready to order food, ask for directions, talk to people at stores and hotels without having to use my phone to translate. There are studies from Yale. Michigan State University and others that continue to prove that Babel is better. One study found that using Babel for 15 hours is like a semester of that language at college. With over 10 million subscriptions sold, Babel is real language learning for real conversations. Here's a special limited time deal for my audience right now. Get up to 60 percent off your Babel subscription, but only for my audience at babbelcom slash Pacman. Rules and restrictions may apply. The link is in the description.